वेलकम टू इंजीनियरिंग फंड ऑफ फैमिली दिस वीडियो इज अ पार्ट ऑफ आर्म प्रोसेसर वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई एल बी गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू सी पी एस आर मीन्स फ्लैग रजिस्टर ऑफ आर्म सेवन सी पी एस आर मीन्स वॉट करंट प्रोग्राम स्टेटस रजिस्टर माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स विथ सी पी एस आर रजिस्टर यू शुड नो वी आर हैविंग टोटल थर्टी टू बिट्स एंड दो बिट्स आर डिफाइनिंग स्टेटस ऑफ द प्रोग्राम how it is defining status of the program let us try to understand that step by step so here my dear students as i have said with arm 7 cpsr register you are having total 32 bits so here you see i have shown d0 to d31 bits which is holding status of the program so in that this first 5 bits d0 to d4 that is holding data regarding in which mode arm 7 is functioning and in features also i have told there are total seven different operating modes which is there with arm 7 user mode fast interrupt mode normal interrupt mode supervisor mode abort mode and undefined mode as well as system mode is there so in total we are having total seven modes right and by using this mode bits we can identify in which mode this arm 7 is there right now right now i'll not explain you this modes for that there is a separate video in my playlist here right now you just consider as per this mode bits we can identify in which mode arm 7 is working right now after that we are we are having t bit which is there with d5 and this t bit that is explaining you in which state arm 7 is there as if this t bit that is equals to 1 then you can say arm 7 that is there in thumb state and as if this t is equals to 0 then you can say arm 7 is functioning in arm state my dear students arm is having 32 bits of processor right and it is supporting 32 bits of instructions but that support is there with arm state when you work with thumb state at that time instruction size that will be of 16 bits right and here my dear students you should know when you work with thumb state at that time as instruction size that is of 16 bits you will be increasing code density so for lower end application user can enable thumb state in that code density will be more so you can effectively use memory for programming but for high end application in arm state we can execute instructions with 32 bits of instructions right so in that high end operation can be performed but for lower end applications arm 7 can be used in thumb state by keeping this t bit is equals to 1 in normal state this t bit that will be 0 that will be arm state in which instruction size will be of 32 bits now next bit that is of d6 bit that is f bit that explains how you want to perform fast interrupt as if you want to mask fast interrupt then you will have to make this bit one so this is a bit which we use it to mask fast interrupt so you see here we have fast interrupt mode right so as if you want to mask that fast interrupt in that case user can make this bit is equals to 1 which indicate that here we have masked fast interrupts right and as if it is equals to 0 then fast interrupt is unmasked over here right so on n f i q pin you will be receiving fast interrupt and we can mask it by using this bit here d7 bit that is indicating status of interrupt here to mask interrupt here by keeping this i bit that is equals to 1 we can mask normal interrupt normal interrupt that we receive at n i r q pin and here when you receive that n i r q pin interrupt at that time it will go in normal interrupt mode but to mask that mode you will have to make this bit is equals to 1 but as if it is equals to 0 we can easily receive normal re interrupt on n i r q pin here my dear students 
these bits are unused by ARM7 TDMI but when we talk about D27 bit then that explains you overflow flag. If overflow is happening during execution of instruction then this V bit which is there with D28 that will get set to 1 right and that will be 0 in case of no overflow is there and that will happen in signed operation only. By example I'll explain you let us try to understand first how these bits are there. So this V bit is equals to 1 in case of overflow if it is 0 then there is no overflow. This D29 bit that explains you status of carry. So in execution of instruction if carry is happening after MSB then this bit will get set to 1 with D29 bit which is carry flag bit. D30 bit that is 0 flag. So as if result is 0 after execution of any instruction this bit will get set to 1 and if result is not 0 then this bit will be 0. D31 bit that explains you whether given result is negative or positive right. So N stands for negative flag. Here as if result is negative then this bit will be 1 and as if it is equals to 0 after execution of any instruction then you can say result is not negative. Now my dear students let us try to understand how these flags are working. See this flag explains what is the status of execution of instruction right and by this status flag there are many conditional instructions that is there with ARM7. You can say almost all the instructions are having conditional execution. So you can have better performance of program and for that you should know how these bits are operating. So for that let us have one example. So here I will be showing you 8 bits of operation. So in that let us consider we have 8 bits with signed number. So signed number with 8 bits that is ranging from minus 82 plus 7f hex right and as if I perform 53 hex plus 42 hex and both are positive in that case what is my answer 3 plus 2 that will be 5 and 5 plus 4 that will be 9 right. So here as both are positive my answer that will be also positive it should be 95 right. And in terms of binary even you see I have done that addition and that is resulting into 95 means 1001 that is 9 and 0101 that is 5. So after execution of this addition my overflow that will be 1. Why the reason is if you observe here what is the range of 8 bit sign number minus 80 hex to 7 f hex but here your answer that is 95 hex. So here that is getting overflowed from the range which is there for 8 bits. So overflow flag that will get set to 1. But n is equals to 0 you see. Why the reason is here this answer is positive. But if you observe normal Intel's processor like 8085, 8086 in that, that sign that was represented by MSB. So here if you observe MSB is 1 right. But MSB does not indicate whether given data is positive or negative. Here negative flag will indicate. So this flag is far better compared to Intel's flag register which was there with 8085-8086 right as it will show you correct overflow as well as it will show you whether given data is positive or negative. Let me give you one more example. For example 8 bits of sign number if you have addition of 26 plus 33 hex then you see our answer will be 6 plus 3 9 and 2 plus 3 5. Answer is positive so n is equals to 0 and you see here there is no overflow. Why the reason is 5 9 hex that is there in the range of minus 80 hex to 7 5 hex so there is no overflow. So here my dear students in short what I can say is here this flag which is there with ARM7 that is not based on D7 bit right. Previously we were been observing D7 bit for negative or positive number. But here practically ARM7 is calculating whether given operation is resulting into positive or negative. So that is how it is better. By using this overflow negative 0 and carry flag we can have all the instructions 
in conditional execution that I'll explain you later when I explain you instructions, right? So here, my dear students, you should know this N, Z, C, V, these flags are conditional flags and that we use to execute conditional instructions. And my dear students, almost all the instructions with ARM7 supports conditional execution in ARM state. So that even I'll explain you when I explain how instruction set is there. So this is all about CPSR flag register of ARM7. I hope you have understood this. Still, if any query is there, what I want is you just post that in comment box so that we can have further discussion. Thank you so much for watching this video.